What is up guys, Poldu here, bringing you some more Valkyria Chronicles for DLC. So I'm doing this video, uh, very different from how I normally do videos. This is all gonna be post-commentated, uh, because the DLC we're doing today is the Expert Skirmish DLC. Now, the solutions to all six of these maps aren't hard. Uh, the first one, I would say, is the hardest map out of all six, um, but... The trial and error that it takes to learn the map, to know what you need to do, or like whatever cheese strat um, that we're going to be doing, it's it doesn't lend itself well to the, uh, the real-time commentary. Also, if I did that, this video would be like four hours long. <laughs> so, in interest of time and just make things nice, quick and easy, get through it, one and done, you know, uh, gonna be post commentary, so let's get into it real quick though before we start uh, if you are interested in this DLC It is $4.99. It came out at the start of the month, and uh, there's no story or whatever None of that no dialogue. No nothing included it is strictly skirmishes um, You do get weapons every map has an enemy ace um, And then you get of course an a rank reward weapon as well um and the weapons, there's one that's really, mm, I don't understand what the point of it is. But most of the weapons are like really, really good. Most of them are the the best in uh, in their certain category, or some of them are just really good in a really niche area. Um, but that is uh, is what this DLC is all about. So let's jump in to map number one. So the first map here is is Hafen Escort. Uh, essentially it's just Hoffen reaches the destination and it can't blow up. Um, and the map, really, really annoying. What a, what a welcome. What a big slap in the face whenever you start this DLC. It's the hardest one out of all six, in my opinion. Um, but I want to place, uh, Albi, because the APC gets blown back. Also, I need Albi set up with the, uh, missiles. Not a flamethrower like I've been. Um, but I use... Minerva, uh, I use Crystal go. as another scout, um, and and she is given a command point. I put Raz down, I put an Engineer down, I chose Olard, I got Riley and Kai. Kai's just here for the extra point, um, but Riley is set up with the anti-personnel. So, you know, with the title of Expert Skirmish um, and Hoffen Escort, it's pretty much what you expect. There's going to be anti-tank gr uh, grenadiers everywhere. There's anti-tank gunners uh, hidden around. But you can see on the map these walls. So in normal Chapter 13, there's the wall at the very end. Well, now we get four, and then there's blockades separating us from the tanks themselves. But uh, you can actually see most of them on the map. But whenever you move, they do show you this fire barrel. Uh, and Riley's going to take that out blow it up. They bring fire back, which is great to see. I thought the mechanic was really cool in Chapter 6, and then they, like, never used it again. Leave it to me. Uh, so fire has come back. Um, so we blow that up. But there's also our first batch of grenadiers that we have to take care of. Two of them are sitting up here. And this is what I meant in the intro as in trial and error stuff. If I did it all live, blind, all that stuff. It would have taken forever because I gotta find all this stuff and then deal with it accordingly. It's not a map that lends itself well to uh, uh, errors. Like there's no, there's really no forgiveness whatsoever on this map. Um, but I, the first shot I took with Riley bounced the further away Grenadier backwards, closer to the second one, and then they're pretty much bunched up together. Take them out there. Got the blast damage up, I don't think it mattered. And we're gonna take Riley over here, uh, just so she is set up for a command that we're gonna do later. This is a command we're doing right here, though. Minerva, and she's gonna take Raz. You can use really any shock trooper, but Raz, you need to place for the extra command point. But we're gonna take a stroll down because everything's barricaded. So Remember we need to, to do some extra movement, sneaking around in the side streets with everyone else. 
take out that guy, and then there are two shock troopers over here. Now, fun thing about this map is all the shock troopers have ammo down guns. So, you really, really need the um, flamethrowers. Otherwise, you're gonna just be really sad trying to blow up the bunkers to kill them. Um, but we went over there, came back over here. I just constantly jump back and forth instead of focusing okay. on one thing. Moving Use out. the fortified treads because there are more grenadiers. We took out two, but there are more. Don't worry. Uh, so we can get as far as we need with the Hoffin. Because see, that one right there would have stopped me. So I wouldn't have been able to take this tank out without it. But uh, a common theme with a lot of these um, skirmishes, as you'll see, is this bombardment. It's used so often, and I feel like it's Coming almost required Requesting for a lot of things. Sending coordinates um, now. But we bombard. I, I chose to bombard a little bit Sailing south fire. of the bottom of the three grenadiers, just so I could try and take out one of the shock troopers in the back. Not that it really matters, but, you know, more damage, whatever. Maybe he'll die, maybe he doesn't. He doesn't die this in this case, but it does kill all three of those grenadiers, and one of them does have a command point. So, shorter enemy phase is uh, is very much Let's go. liked. And we're gonna move the glory. Um, now, with the glory, because we can see this trooper, you don't have to shoot him. I shot him because, why not? There's nothing else the glory is gonna do this turn. And I managed to land something later, you know, I guess I get to land that, but I don't get to land the easy shot later. Uh, but I hit him. So on enemy phase, because this is our last point, uh, we will be able to kill him as he suicides into Raz. Uh, but these two here, got a flamethrower. Thankfully get the undodgeable shot, because a lot of, uh, very, uh, words. Another common use in these is safety saves, because people like to dodge. And it's better to just save before they, uh, before you fight them. So you don't have to redo the entire map when something dodges. Most of them are really short maps, but a map like this, restarting over and over just because of one person dodging, really annoying. So I definitely recommend using some safety saves. I think I use one in this map. But enemy phase, we see more grenadiers that have uh, revealed themselves and are just going to town, trying to take us out. There's two there. They're gonna be our next targets with uh, bombardment. That's what I was saying, bombardment. I don't know if you can do this without maxed out bombardment. Um, like I have every single level, every item, everything is fully fleshed out for big damage. If you don't have it, you might, you might be uh, kind of shit out of luck. I'm sure you could still find a victory, but it wouldn't be A rank, probably, uh, because the window is very, very tight. Uh, you get four turns, and we're going to be winning on turn four. You could do a three turn if everything went optimally and you didn't go for the enemy ace. Three turn, for sure. Um, and even if you did go for the enemy ace, a three turn might be possible with some luck, like double movement luck and whatnot. But four turns, it's the last turn for A rank and is the most comfortable when most of this map is fairly uncomfortable feeling. But there were people in that corner and uh, had I lucked out at the start with Riley and got a double action, I would have actually ran Raz around the corner and flamethrowered all of them to get them out of the way so I didn't have to worry about them Come running in, down. Requesting fire but support. alas, I did not. Now. So they're just gonna kind of run down which I like the path they took here because if you don't kill them, sometimes they just run toward like where Minerva's sitting and just point blank you with a lance in the face. Um, and they, it, it kills you, it, it hurts. But that bombardment, taking them out, doing a little damage to things on the ground behind this next uh, barricade. But we're gonna command with Crystal. So we're gonna Watch grab our medic and this is where we grab Riley, because we do need her to uh, get further along to help us take out the barricades. 
and, you know, take out other things as well. She's helpful for that. My Riley currently has the telescope item. Well, I don't know if it's specifically the telescope. It's the 90 range boost. Um, but I luck out here and got a double movement. You don't need the double movement for this, um, but Chris, I, Crystal was the scout I chose uh, because she has the potential for double movement. So Minerva and Crystal both having double movement, fantastic. Um, but normally I would stop over by that sandbag, but because I got the double movement, um, we're gonna we're gonna move all the way down here and just kind of kind of drop people off a little bit. The main thing you need is Olard is uh, needs to help the Hoffman because it is at half HP, and then we're gonna we're gonna drop Riley off. Now Crystal, I wouldn't recommend running back this as far as I did with Crystal. Um, because in hindsight, there's another movement you need to use for the same three people. That the closer she is to the street, to the me. better. But yeah, we're gonna grab Olard, heal up the Hoffin just for safety. Especially with how reckless I ended up being toward the end of this map for no good reason. <laughs> and I would, I'm gonna mention it again whenever I do it, but I definitely recommend not doing exactly what I do there. But heal him up, run back, and then Riley is going to finish off this next barricade. So only the first and last one are fire barricades. The middle two have Ragnite crates. And this Ragnite crate is right here. And you can you can really easily see that one on the map. You can see the fire barrels too, if you know what you're looking for. They're little little circles. Um, but the Ragnite crates are blue and glowy, so you can see them easily. But we take that out and we see a nice anti-tank gunner right in our faces. But thankfully, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Like it's not that big of a threat. So we clear the way using a using a shrapnel mortar and it helps take out half of uh, the heavy AT cannons HP. Watch out, move it forward. And like I said, I landed the uh, the hit against that shock trooper down the hall. But uh, I'm not allowed to hit this. So, you know, <laughs> went right under it. That felt, it felt great, let me tell you. But I'm pretty much gonna ignore him. Like, I need the glory to get closer anyway, but it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna grab Minerva. And Minerva is going to clean up our mess. If he did get that, I would use Minerva to take out of this Lancer. Um, but you know. Good ol' Albie. Where we come down here, from one street to the other, finish this guy off. Luckily, these guys can't dodge. Oh my god, could you imagine if, if they gave Gatlings and AT cannons the ability to dodge? You know how frustrating that shit would be? Ugh, I don't, I don't, no thank you. No thank you. Uh, but we're gonna move Minerva again and come down here. There's a ladder over here where we killed those there. grenadiers with the, the bombardment. We get a nice vantage point on the next barricade there. with two heavy AT cannons. Both of them luckily have Ragna crates behind them. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that or worry about trying to, to get a sniper over here or anything. So Minerva makes that real easy. And there's a grenadier you can see him out there to the left. Where's the tank? Uh, I don't take him out. You can, especially with the setup I have on Riley with her accessory. She can reach him uh, whenever I get her up there, but he's really, it's not needed, but there is a point where if you get really unlucky, he will kind of screw you over. But most of the time, he won't hit the tank. But we're gonna use Minerva. Get the other one here. here I come. 
nice and easy. And just chill for safety. Don't wanna don't wanna break that barricade yet. Not this turn. We're gonna do it pretty much first thing next turn. Because there is uh, a tank back there. And I'd rather it not shoot the glory. They're gonna call in reinforcements in the back there. And you don't ever have to worry about them. Uh, maybe if you're here for more than four turns, you have to worry. But they will not get close enough to your starting base. They don't even attack Kai. Kai just sits in the base this entire map. He does not do anything. This guy likes just running around on the rooftop. I'm not entirely sure what his AI is trying to do. But he doesn't do anything. That Grenadier, like I said, he... He can shoot, he can fire on us, but for the most part, he's not worth the the trouble. Because he did fire on the glory. Um, but when we move the glory here in a bit, we're going to use the building that's between as cover. And it works pretty well. <sighs> Alright, so start of turn three. We are going to, I think we grab Crystal here. No, we grab Minerva Moving first. Out. And take out this barricade. Found them. So there's only one barricade left for us to do. Now. So we're gonna have to get Riley on this rooftop, but this is what I mentioned about the ammo down. So this guy right there, do not get too close to him. You want to just barely be out of his range, but still close enough that you're going to be able to set up a grenade, a uh, scout grenade launcher. Because he's in a really shitty spot, and the enemy ace has to do with that guy. You would never, ever find the enemy ace just looking at the map on this. You have to actually get way back in there by that camp. And uh, you'll see where he is from there. But Crystal, the shock trooper, um, again, you know, you don't have to take him out. But I figured Crystal's not going to be attacking anything this turn. So I might as well go for it. And we get a nice, lovely dodge. But this is what I mean what, when I said Crystal, I wouldn't move as far back as I did. Because I just barely reached the ladder. Now, without the double movement, of course, Crystal would have started further back. Out. Um, and in that case, Crystal would be where Raz is, and you would use one point to get her up right next to Olard or your, your medic and Riley, and then command and bring them up there. Uh, but there's what I was saying. Throw a grenade at him from further than he can shoot you. Make him stand up. And then we're gonna bring Olard back down. And Olard is mainly, like Olard's role in this entire map is like backup in case you get your ammo taken away and then healing the Hoffin. Um, I used him as well for um, cleaning other mistakes with landmines here in a bit. <laughs> But you shouldn't run into landmines if you know where they are. I wasn't paying attention and just decided to roll over them. Anyway. Uh, but we take this camp. You don't really need to take the camp, but I did because I could. And you can see this lovely barricade. The enemy ace is behind this wall. You would never see him. You would never know if you didn't walk all the way back here and look at the barricade. So that's fun. Let's go. Um... But that, if that grenade hit me, I would be really sad. That's that's what I was talking about, uh, being unlucky. There are two other grenadiers on the other side of this last wall that I guess could have hit me as well. And that would have uh, been rather unfortunate. So, a safety save before you move the glory there could be something you want to do. Uh, but we're going to bombard here. And there's really no need to, like inch away because it's not going to kill anything else everything besides these 
Grenadiers are Requesting fire support. like anti-tank cannons now. and Gatling guns, so they're not gonna die. But you just you just want to attack with bombardment, take out both the grenadiers, and you're pretty much home free. Like this is the point where, if you didn't care about the enemy ace, you could break the barricade and just okay, run up. it in with the Hoffen. Like you would break the barricade before this turn and then run in with the Hoffen. But there's also this assault tank hiding back here if you want to wait. Make sure you have enough control. CP. I see. Good. But because I do need the ace and there. that click right there, there are some uh, some lovely mines over there. Leave it to me. That's one. The first one I hit, mind you, and then the last one, part of that so recklessness easy. I talked about before. But I use one of my points, take out the trooper. Didn't really need to, nice. but I felt like Keep it. Uh, I could have used Riley again over here to take the Grenadier out from way downtown, but I saved the last two points we have, and the turn, and reinforcement arrives, but like I said, you don't have to worry about it unless you plan to be here longer than four turns. And even then, you have a clear shot at him with Riley, or not with Riley, with Kai, if you do decide, or something goes wrong and you're, you don't really care about the A rank, you just want the, the clear, this is nothing. But there's that guy attacking the glory. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Like this guy this is the a shock trooper that they called in. And he just kinda runs down. And that's it. No real threat. Just kinda looking at Kai. And this is where our safety save. This is where the safety save I chose comes into play. Because, um... Enemy aces are even dodgier than normal units. So you already know things get real nice whenever you have no choice but to face them. Granted, I guess you could... Well, I don't actually know if you can stand it. I don't know. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. We're moving Riley a bit closer to take out this final barricade. Um, I couldn't fully remember where this fire barrel was, so I spent a little bit. I found like a little little blip of it, so I decided to say like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna fire about where it is. It's dead center behind it, but I couldn't get the full target. But I hit it, thankfully." Now, over here. So, I guess another way you could do this, in hindsight, assuming whenever you throw a grenade here to break the barricade, that you could walk inside it. Here I come! Like, I'm not actually... Let me see from here. Yeah, you Yeah, you can definitely walk inside that. Um, I guess what you could do is run in after him and get him to turn around and then surprise attack him with, a, with like, your engineer. What I decided to do was use Inspiration Order so that we have a higher chance of proccing undodgeable shot. Um, and then, of course, took my safety save because it's not guaranteed. Inspiration does not guarantee you get undodgeable shot. <laughs> Just watch. But... I don't want to redo the map. No Granted, I have quite a lot of uh, excess command points, but different RNG outcomes you might not have as many. So, safety save is very nice there. Oh lard, this is where I try to cover some of my mistakes. So normally you just run it forward, take out the tank at the end and win. But I wanted to make sure I didn't screw something up at the very end, so I grabbed Olard, came all the way down here, got rid of the tank mines over here, the one that I'm currently sitting on as well. Uh, and then I took out the other one, just in case I decided spinning and over there was the way. Um, but... That's as far as Olar can go. He can't go through the fire to, uh... 
to okay. fix Moving out. the recklessness that I do. So here, I would go straight right. Don't keep going forward, go straight right. But I went right behind this anti-tank uh, cannon. So I would get a nice viewpoint of that ultimate tank's uh, radiator. But there's one, two, and three. That third one, I don't know if that was a tank mortar or uh, tank mine or not. But if it was, I lucked out on some weird explosion thing and it didn't blow up my often. But that's why I was saying be smarter about that one. But there's the A rank, four turns. You get the ZM car XE. And you can see the lovely uh, ducats and experience you get out of it. You get rewarded pretty nicely if you haven't, or if you still need a use for experience and money exemplary. at this point in the game. Please accept this um, reward from headquarters. But that was the enemy ace weapon, and you get the brown M9D rifle. And real quick, just to show you what they do, the, the enemy ace weapon is an anti-armor rifle with seven shots. It's only 150 armor, so like it's nothing huge. It's just kind of this strange little niche. And then the brown M9D is pretty good, honestly. Like it has extra range compared to the uh, brown M10. It does have minus two versus person, but has a nice extra armor boost, still seven shots, uh, higher range and higher aim. So that's the first map done. So on to the next map, Blitz Assault. So this is night and day difference from the first map. The first map was four turns. You had to make some pretty precise things happen. All this right. one, Lock and load. just put down uh, Minerva. Make sure she has the plus six defense item. Um, and then make sure you have a triple shot you sniper uh, on Kai and put Riley over here. Doesn't really matter My what turn. weapon Riley has, but triple shot sniper on Kai. I've got this. Uh, and then Minerva over here and just place the rest of your command points on the top left uh, camp and you're good to go. This is just a tough. take the camp. Do this. And there's Squatty. some like weirdness Hold going on. Like there's more barricades and there's this like weird, I don't know. This is pretty much just defense boost and run through bullets. That's essentially what's going on here. Like it mentions enemy engineers aim to destroy the makeshift barricade in one turn. They only... It's, they don't mean all of them. It's one barricade is being destroyed. Um, and I don't know. It's just really, really strange. Uh, but we're gonna this defense boost order. Minerva. Defensive formation. Brace for enemy attack. And we're gonna, we're just gonna run. This is a two-turn map. And the enemy ace. Moving out. The way we get the enemy ace is really tricky. Um, I didn't actually realize you could do this until this map. So it's pretty pretty fun way to take out the enemy ace. I guess he could he might be able to dodge whenever we attack him, but I only had to do this twice, like once to look at the map, figure out what I needed to do, and then the second time to do this. But we run it through. Now, if you luck out and get some double actions um, or double movement rather, you could probably one turn this. Um, I don't think it's worth trying to roll the roll the die to do so, but we're just gonna run it through. There is the little like checkpoint thing on the map. You can completely disregard it. Uh, but the enemy ace, so while you're running anyway, there's really no sense in not trying to reveal the enemy ace. He's sitting over here uh, in this camp. And I don't actually know his exact position, so I just kind of like shot in the dark, tried to uh, to hit him Eyes up. with a grenade because it saves it saves a command point, so might as well try. Uh, but then you come down this ladder and continue on going. So here, I actually am about to luck out Victory. with a. Uh, with a double movement. Normally what I would do here without the double movement is I would heal right under this little like awning covered thing set up for grenades and then use a command to refresh her AP and then continue running. But we didn't need to do that. So we just 
continued up, ran along, up the steps, past everything. There's a, an annoying sniper, which I guess if he does hit the first bullet, you might be in trouble whenever he hits the second bullet. Um, but I'm not gonna attack him. I'm just gonna heal in his face and scroll through all my weapons, forgetting that I already pre-selected Ragnade. But there we go. Nice heal. And now I'm gonna use the command. Um, but before I do all that, this is the enemy ace. So we're gonna grab Riley. I don't know, again, if you need a, an increased range accessory. I have the 90 range accessory on Riley. Uh, and then just attack this corner here. And you see the little health bar pop up. That's all you need. You don't need to do any damage with Riley. You just need his health bar to pop up. And uh, then you grab Kai. And this is where he might be able to dodge, but I'm not sure. You can actually shoot in between these little barriers. Which is not a sight line. Um, I don't believe. So I don't know if he can dodge or not. I don't know if he detects that you see him. But it's three shots to the head. Warlord, Cobb attack is down too easy and he drops a ridiculous weapon um but that's all you really need i face that way with kai because there is a shock trooper that wants to come say hi later but she doesn't actually do anything against him um and that's fine but then we get back to minerva use the command since we got the double movement and just continue on our way and uh, this, you do want to run a little bit across his bridge just so those guys show up. I thought maybe I could just run it down because I got the double movement, but I quickly realized that's two snipers shooting at me. <laughs> Defense boost is nice, but it's not, it doesn't make you completely invincible. So I turn around, sit behind this pillar. Uh, but now that those two snipers, you can see them. Another use for bombardment, just Come to take them out. Requesting fire support. Don't need the now. snipers ruining everything. Fire fire. But more bombardment, this is what I'm saying. Like I, I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to think, but I'm pretty sure we use bombardment. I think there's one map I don't use bombardment. <laughs> There might be two, I can't remember. But at least one where I don't. For victory. Um, and with those dead, I do sit here and take this guy out with Minerva. I guess he could dodge in your face and make you real sad. Um, but this actually, like, nice. safety Keep saves, eh. It's a two turn map. I don't think a safety save is really warranted on this map. Unless you just really don't want to run it down again. Um, but I also, just for, just for good measure, I do use the last point, uh, for a healing request, just to make sure her HP is looking good, um, because I'm about to completely blank out and forget to give her a defense, <laughs> a defense order on the next turn, uh, and I'm gonna take a lot of damage, so it's pretty nice that I did that. But this is this is the warning they gave you at the start of the map, saying like, oh, the enemy engineers, they say engineers, I don't know why they say engineers, but it's all Lancers, um, are going to destroy the barricade. And then your dual, your, your dual shock battery has to, has to go low so. here. It's, uh, it's RNG manipulation. <laughs> always happens at like the worst times, right? It's always whenever you, you wanna sit down and do something important. Like for me, it's recording. It, it never it never dies when I'm just casually playing a game. It's always during a recording. But these Lancers, they're just gonna come out of the woodwork. There's a bunch of them back here. And I guess they don't attack simultaneously. They just attack consecutively. Cause I don't know, I actually haven't ever tested it, but I guess because barricades aren't enemies, you can't do a dual strike. Because if they could dual strike, they could probably tear down both barricades in one turn. They don't, but they probably could. 
This is the trooper that I turned Kai around for, but she doesn't even try to shoot him, and he tries to hit Riley from there and hits an invisible wall the entire time. Or just, well, it's the lip of the stair, but he feels like he can make, <laughs> feels like he can uh, make this shot. But these, these Lancers are having a field day out here. Attacking this barricade. But, like I said, I'm assuming because, because it's not technically an enemy, it's just an item with health. They don't, they're not able to dual strike and just tear it down real quick. But yeah, they just back to back. There's one barricade down. Oh, but there's another one right in their face. What a sad day. And the mortar comes in. The mortar, I, I thought was going to fully destroy the barricade. It does not. Not that it really matters. Uh, and then more reinforcements appear. And they're like, oh, now you have three turns or they're gonna destroy another barricade. It's like, oh, oh no. Moving out. What a, what a disaster. But here is my first mistake. I, f I targeted Minerva and then I immediately was like, well, I forgot about defense order. So I'm just gonna walk anyway and hope for the best. I do get the soldier's honor proc, which helps. And I decide to attack that guy to further extend uh, my health. And he doesn't dodge, luckily. So we come down here, grenadier, whatever. And then you wanna stop right when you see these two. So this is the camp. There's two shock troopers sitting right there. Uh, and then there's a few different ways to do this. I decided to use explosives boost, which makes this grenades like actually Release able to kill shock troopers. This. And with the right placement, you could blow them both up in the single Victory. grenade here. But um, I definitely don't do that. I also <laughs> freak out because my health here drops significantly. Because again, I didn't use the defense order. I should have used it immediately after I stopped here, but I thought, you know what? Maybe I won't need to. I have plenty of command points. I don't really need to be stingy, but I decided to anyway. Uh, and then after that, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I need it. This last guy, I hate, I hate to get all the way over here just to be killed by the final dude. Um, but I didn't hit him at all with that grenade. He didn't take any damage. Uh, and I'm also just, I just want to be really, really sure. So with the defense order, our HP is low. I want to be, I want to make sure. So I use a rescue squad to pretty much fully heal Minerva. Can't be, can't be out here risking it like that. I want to make sure my mistake is completely patched up. Just watch. And, and then grab Minerva again. You could all you could also try and like resupply Minerva here. Give her a grenade since you already gave her explosive boost. And just no call the grenade shot. back in. Uh but either way, as long as you take out both troopers, you're golden. Because those are the only things you really have to. And there you go. All done. Captured the enemy base. And that's another expert challenge done. The first one, as you'll see, the first one is by far the hardest one. And it's only because you have to escort the Hoffin. Anything else is fine. Um, but there's you know, the A rank, uh, the enemy Lance, the VVPL6E. That nice chunk of experience and ducats as well. Your performance in the previous battle was exemplary. Please accept this reward from headquarters. And the Robinson M99D machine gun. Now that freaking machine gun. So here's here's the lance. It's 3,000 versus armor, which is crazy. But it's you know in comparison, it's low range um, and low aim. But 3,000 versus armor, I'm down. Sounds fun to me. I decide. I, I'm pretty sure I decide. Yeah, I'll equip it on Gertrude. Why the hell not? Yeah, it's, I don't know, seems fun to me. Uh, and I actually went to put another, like a range, range extender on her for help. But look at, oh, this is not the weapon I thought it was. Never mind. I will save my 
my comments. You just get a really good, really good machine gun. It's just straight up better. Uh, the only thing you're really missing out on is range and aim compared to some of the other ones, but as the best damage, it's not a 35 shot. It's just a standard 20 shot with some really good damage. Don't really need to ask for much more. So moving on to the third map, Escape from a Dire Situation. This one is just make it into the target area. Don't have to capture anything, don't have to do anything. You get three people, but it's very important that you give Minerva the uh, anti-ailment resist, the medic's pouch ailment resistant accessory because there is a, an enemy on this map that has a defense down gun and uh, right. it's gonna make you it's gonna make you real sad otherwise. Now this map it shouldn't really matter where you put your people. If I swapped Crystal Maybe and tough. Minerva, uh, what ends this. up happening Squatty, probably wouldn't out. have happened. Um, but there's some RNG involved in this because technically this is a one turn solution. I did it in two, but <sighs> it shouldn't order. it shouldn't All have worked. On the defensive. It, I should have failed. Protected. But I wanted to leave in the ridiculous RNG anyway. So we're gonna start off with that defend all inside. order. And you're gonna grab Crystal. It doesn't have to be Crystal. I just, again, I'm using Crystal as my off scout. Um, just because I like that she has double movement. You don't need to use her. Uh, you just need to make sure whatever scout you are using, you give the uh, command point to. So we're gonna run all the way out here. I see them. Calm down. Uh, because the enemy ace is hidden back here. This is where RNG comes Poor into play. Lieutenant Victor. So because the enemy ace is back here behind this busted tank looking at us, I see them. we They're can't fine. try and get a surprise attack. So, you know, in enemy ace fashion, we attack him and he dodges. I, I want you to know, I had to reset this about five cool. or six times because of this dude. So... Uh, the winning strategy had him dodge at least once. Uh, and you really don't have, like, you can see, we only have three Commencing command assault. points left. There's not a lot of wiggle room to, to be had here. Uh, if I were to get the first one, we would be plenty fine. Stupid edgy the blood knight over here with a joke weapon. The weapon you get from him is ridiculous, but he's done. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. Now you grab Minerva. And it's kind of up to, it, it, it's two things. Either you get a double movement with Minerva here, Wait for the right or fire. dude Federation over, officer. like the, the enemy ace doesn't Wait, die. Now again, like I said, if I were to swap the positions of Crystal and Minerva, just so I get a few extra steps on Minerva, things might be different. But you can see right where I'm standing, you can see the, the purple bullets. There's an engineer right next to me that has defense down bullets. And if you don't have ailment resist accessory equipped, you're going to die. Because defense boost is nice, but it's not, it doesn't make you invincible, especially whenever he defense downs you. Um, but we move out here, heal up, use a command just to ensure I have the most AP left and we're just gonna run through. We just gotta get straight behind. Um, and I am so, so incredibly close. Look, I like, I, I sat here to myself and really like took in, like I am so ridiculously close. Only, only like a step or two away, which in this case, like I said, if I had moved Minerva and Crystal the other way around, it would have been one and done. So being as close as I am, um, I, I decided to say, fuck it. Let me just end the turn and see what happens. Because yeah, I could have reset and just fixed things. Um, but I, I was curious and this guy runs Easy. up and I thought I was dead. I was like, our HP isn't looking good. He runs up, flame throws us point blank. We dodge it. That in dodging us, let us live on 26 HP. But look at all of the stuff around us. Like, this guy's gonna attack Claude, whatever. It doesn't matter. Claude doesn't die, surprisingly. Um, and I actually don't know if Claude goes down if you fail or not. So, <laughs> I'm not sure. But another trooper, another trooper that we... 
<laughs> we don't. This, this is the, the part that I wanted to keep in because this is ridiculous. This is a one turn strategy. I did it in two turns, but I shouldn't have lived all this. That's another dodge. And I thought there's, there's no way. There's no way they're gonna let me get away with this. Spoiler alert, they let me get away with this. Like, look at everything on the map. They have three points left. They could completely blow me back. But they decide, nah, this dude way up here, let's move him. Mm -hmm. That's that's definitely that's definitely the wave. Let's let's go over there, and then we don't need the last two points. You can have them. So I'm just like that. All of that really just happened. So I'm gonna abuse the hell out of it. I'm rescue squatting, making Taking sure casualties. these Request last two squad. steps. Like I have 26 HP. If I took a single step I on 26 Alien. HP, I would die. <laughs> so rescue squad, give Minerva her HP back. And Crystal, I'm actually really surprised Crystal didn't have anyone targeting her either. Maybe it's because they don't see her because she's back there. But again, I only got a few steps left and I ain't screwing it this up. After orange. that Defensive mess of crazy good attack. RNG, I'm defense boosting her as well after the fact. I don't need the defense boost, but I, I wanted it. I needed to be doubly sure. And then there we go. Just take a few steps and in we go. So it weren't, like I said, it's a one turn solution. Just run through, hope that the enemy ace doesn't dodge like four times in a row and you're good. Um, nice chunk of, you know, experience in ducats again. You get that gun and that gun. I, mm. Your performance in the previous battle we'll, was We'll see, it, that gun leaves Please me pretty speechless. From headquarters. But again, for A ranking it, we get a Lance, the M2 EQ uh, 9D, and it's uh, it's nothing I would personally use. It is, uh, it's like an anti-personnel Lance, kind of, like, but not, well, not really. Like, it has 280 versus personnel, but it's, it's like an accuracy thing, kind of, like, it's got C and aim, 700 range. That's really it, I don't use it, but look at this. This is what you get from the enemies, Mr. The Blood Knight. Aim, amazing. Range, amazing. Damage versus person and armor, fantastic. But you can see the glaring problem. Seven, seven bullets on a machine gun. Like it's almost like they wanted to try and recreate the room from Valkyria Chronicles 1, the like most busted weapon like ever. But they're like, you know what? Instead of making a real machine gun, let's give it seven shots like a rifle. Yeah, let's do that. I, that's not worth it. Like, the damage is great. The the aim and range is great, but that's not worth it. I guess, in some case, using it on enemy phase, it would be good there. But that's like the only, only thing. But also, it really wouldn't be that good because after seven shots attacking with an interception fire you're gonna you're gonna reload and they could just walk right past you so i don't know ridiculous weapon but another map complete all right so we've crossed the halfway point we're moving on to skirmish number four struggle on the bridge now this is another really really short one really easy uh but it does require some rng and it's mainly like bullet spread rng uh but we place minerva we place crystal all right um, and that's pretty much all you need. Uh, do place the other captains you have oh, down goodness. just for extra command points because you do need them. Uh, and you can place other people if you really want to be here for more than one turn. Um, but, eh. Just make sure you have the defense back on Minerva after doing the ailment resistance. You're gonna use an all units defend. And now... The also, run we're about to make with Crystal, Keep yourselves protected. It, like I said, it's bullet spread RNG. So I've I made this run a few different times, and each time was different. We, we came out with a different uh, amount of HP. But you also want a demolition boost Minerva, which is a strange thing to do to a lan uh, to a lancer to a scout. With everything you've got, 
but it will be necessary, and it won't be the only time uh, we do something like this. We do another situation like that next map. Um, but I also save here because, like I said, the bullet RNG is annoying, and I'd rather save after I do the order setup because it's, it could be the same thing every time. So grab Crystal. Accuracy down, whatever. She's not going to be shooting anything. She's going to use a grenade. That's up. She got the skilled scout AP up, and I don't think that is required because with her normal AP, you can make it all the way over here to this ladder. Um, I don't know how far you move after this ladder, but there's nothing that can really reach you. There's this sniper, and that is the enemy ace. So if you make it up here alive, that's all you really need. Um, and then you just need to throw a grenade in this dude's face, and because he's a sniper, he dies in one grenade. You know the crafty. Done. Nice and easy. Enemy ace. Taken out. And the rest is up to Minerva. So, the, uh, if you didn't see at the start, and I do save <laughs> after doing that, just for another safety, um, this was just a Take, out. take the camp. And there's there's a lot of things going on. The Grenadier um, happens to be pretty shitty. And uh, you can see because there's there's a there's a radiator that we see way down there, right? I decide to try and see if I can take it. But uh I get hit by a nice radiator. And now I'm no longer in uh in range for uh, really anything significant. <laughs> I do decide to go for it, no! just because why not? It said question mark, but I was like, oh, we have demolition boost, maybe something will happen? No, no, nothing happened. Um, and I do use a rescue squad here, but I have no wiggle room. Requesting a rescue squad. Now, if you luck out with a, uh, a double movement, right, like where I stopped moving, then you're probably good, but I don't think I used up all my AP on turn one. Um, but I use a command just to ensure we get as far as possible. But that that rescue really helps get our a uh, get our HP back, and we just make our way all the way around. And there's this assault tank here. It has a flamethrower, by the way. So if you screw this up, I tried. One of the one of the attempts I had. Um, I don't know what happened. I think I forgot to use demolition boost when I came out here or something. But I hid behind the tank, thinking, okay, well, I'll probably safe unless it moves. And it turns around and uses flamethrower. So that was fantastic. Uh, another safety save because people can duck um, grenades. But for the final point, you need this guy right here to get blown out of the square with a grenade. Um, I think it's a lot harder to do in this game compared to the other Valkyra Chronicles entries. Because sometimes they'll hit the sandbag and just stand up where they were even though their body ragdolls away. But in situations like that, they do fully ragdoll away, which is what you need. And then you just go ahead and take it. Don't need to kill him, just need him to be ragdolled away. And there we go. One in uh, one and done turn, you know, I said that weird. One turn, nice, nice, easy. Uh, and then we get this sniper, which is wrapped up in cloth. I don't know the significance of that. Like, I'm not a gun person, but it looks fancy. That's for killing the enemy ace. And then, of course, the A rank rewards. I have no idea what happens on the map exemplary. on turn two other Please than, like, this the dude turning around and using a flamethrower. Uh, but we get another sniper, so for doing this, the ace drops a sniper, and you get a sniper for the A rank. Both of them are actually pretty, pretty nice as well. So, for the enemy ace, you get a really good, uh, like, upgrade to the gout, essentially. It's a long-range, good aim, anti-tank sniper. 1,500 damage. And the other one that you get is just a standard, uh, like, Three shot. It has good anti armor, lower versus person compared to the the LF number ten. Um, so it's just 
If you want to do more towards armor, it's only 100 versus armor, though, so it's nothing major. Um, but that's... It's just a straight upgrade to the Gout. So fantastic, fantastic rifle that you get from that ace there. So skirmish number five is a Night Shrouded Liberation. Uh, it's the spotlight map, and victory conditions is just capture every enemy camp. Uh, this, again, we're gonna use two scouts, one with, uh, you know, All one right. being Minerva, of course, and the other one being whatever scout you like best with a command point. Lock we're gonna put load. down Raz and, uh, um, Raz outside, preferably. And then two other, uh, shot troopers of your, uh, your choice. I, I use Ferrier you. and, uh, Viola, and then, of course, uh... Riley and Kai for command points. Also, they help with interception fire um, on the enemy phase because this will be a two turn map. This is uh, but the first thing we're going to do is all defensive. units defend Keep order. Protected. Standard, just so we don't die. Um, you really only need like one extra shock, shock trooper Moving outside out. of Raz, but. Um, the the third one is kind of just insurance. Uh, now, the spotlights in this map are scary. It's not like spotlights when you do this in the story where they don't really matter. Uh, these spotlights have an actual consequence instead of just spawning uh, random reinforcements. These two spawn random reinforcements, but this is what happens. I'll show you here. So Minerva gets caught. And if she had AP left, it would take the rest of your AP, end that command point, and it says an ally has been captured by enemy patrol. And they get warped over here and surrounded by two shock troopers. So we start up there, warped up here, Look surrounded. It's fantastic. So don't get, <laughs> don't get spotted. There's actual consequence this time. And I kind of wish they did that in the chapter. It would make the spotlights, you know, actually mean something. But whatever uh we're gonna come oh get stuck on <laughs> the sandbag there uh come out here take out the grenadier and capture the camp here the enemy ace is just place. around the corner so as we've done for the other enemy aces we're gonna get a lovely safety save because uh <laughs> oh boy is dodging annoying So there's that safety save. This man dodged so often, but <laughs> Just we got watch. it. All is fine. I'm a Federation officer. Come in. I don't know what his name is supposed to be. Vice Chief. I don't know if it's Chemist. Chemist. I don't, chemist without the T. I don't know, but he's dead. Nice scout in the corner. Nah, and sure. uh, I don't know if the, I think this messes with the enemy AI. <laughs> How was that? Uh, but I like to hide in this little sewer tunnel, little hidey hole. I think it also, it's helpful, uh, to have Minerva over here as insurance later, just in case you need it, but you probably won't need it. Uh, but next you're gonna take your other scout, in this case, Crystal, of course, and take one of your shock troopers and, uh, start heading down. So we're gonna get the, uh, Camp down south. Now this requires exact CP that we currently have. This is why the safety save was necessary, because if I missed and just decided to keep going, I wouldn't be able to take this camp this turn. That's not a huge deal. You could, uh, because if you stop right in front of this crate right here, instead of walking forward out here toward the tank and the shock trooper, you could just end your turn, save the CP, and then uh, do the rest on turn two, but we're gonna throw a grenade at that guy. It doesn't kill him, of course, but uh, it, you know, shock trooper at a sandbag, gotta get him standing. Uh, and then this is the other use of demolition boost I mentioned. This is an order. We're gonna give it to Blast Crystal tanks with everything you've got. to shoot this tank's radiator. It It's so great that it just so happens to be the full seven shots to the radiator that takes Poor these Lieutenant tanks Victor. out. Uh, I never really would have thought of doing it otherwise, but I was like, you know what? I, I could have done the same thing, like, reverse. Like, I could give it to Viola, 
um, and wouldn't have to worry about Enemy exact down. shots or whatever. And then have Crystal take out. take out that shock trooper. Uh, but either either way you do it, like if you're not using a seven shot rifle or something, you could you could demolition boost the shock trooper you bring down here and be fine uh, as well. And again, if this guy this is our last command point, so if this guy dodges, we are shit out of luck. <laughs> And we could we could reload at our last safety save, but then we have to re-roll the enemy ace again. So safety save just to ensure this guy doesn't duck. So he dies, and we can go ahead, cap the flag. Also a safety save to make sure you cap the flag, because one of the runs I had, <laughs> I reloaded, ran it back, killed him, and completely forgot to cap it, and just ended my turn. And it was, uh, it wasn't good. It was not good. Uh, the outcome is not going to be good, regardless. The the only, like, the only thing is, as long as the camp isn't taken, you're good to go. And that sniper, uh, or dodging that sniper shot doesn't matter a whole lot. Like, I think it helps us live a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, I don't think it matters too much. Um, but a Lancer walks up. All the Lancers on this map have Mortar Lances, by the way, with AP loss. So this matters over at the main camp, which I guess, now that I think about it, it is required to have all the Shock Troopers. The one isn't fully insurance, it is to make sure that guy dies. Because if he gets all the way to your main camp, um, he's going to AP loss the people that you're going to use on turn two to win the map, and you're going to be very sad. Uh, I guess you could use an antidote <laughs> order if you really wanted. Um, this is but, nothing. you know, I can why, why waste the fight. CP, you know? But this guy comes out, kills Viola and Crystal, but he does not reach the camp, so it really doesn't matter. The scout runs up, no one really cares to look at him and he attacks Riley doesn't really matter he can sit there I'm not gonna kill him um, but no one none of the enemy like there's one enemy I don't know what this guy is doing like he gets on the roof and comes down the roof I don't know if he's trying to get to the camp down south or not but none of them even bother to attempt to take the camp after those two mortar lancers so it doesn't matter they can die and uh, there's no consequence. Now, this is uh, where things, I mean, this is he shouldn't order. die. Claude should not die on this Keep run. He gets protected. some really low HP though. Even through this all units defend, but you're definitely gonna need another all units defend. And then we're gonna command with Claude. Let's go, everyone. And here's where we take the other two shock troopers. Uh, now, taking both isn't Let's necessary. Well. You can go. leave one behind you if you want. Um, but again, Call kind of go. that insurance thing I was talking about. If something goes wrong horribly, you at least Keep have two open. shock troopers over here to help out. But we're going to no run over go. here. Um, right going to get really shredded by the tank and the Gatling turret right there. But we're going to use the tank as a shield against the Gatling turret. Also going to get another safety save because there is one person we have to kill at the last camp and you don't really need the save for him, but if you know, if you accidentally hit one of these lights, which I couldn't remember the exact pattern, so I sat here for a bit to uh, make sure I was safe. But the safety save outside of just accidentally touching a light doesn't really, it's not really needed unless... You did something extra this turn and are low on CP. But we run up, there's this one guy, and we're just going to flamethrower him. If he does duck, I have, I think, like four extra command points. Um, so I wouldn't need to reload. But that is another map clear. Yeah, we had f four extra after this move. So it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, this base is mine. But there we go. 
That is five skirmishes down. There's one left to go. Ooh. But of course, we gotta we gotta look at our rewards. See all the goodies we got. The A rank, of course. <laughs> Big chunk of experience and ducats as usual. And renown, which again, I mean I guess renown, you could get a bunch of rank one through four weapons and whatnot. Or five, I think you can unlock at some point. I don't have that, I don't know. But you get the ZM Car 8E enemy scout rifle. Your for uh, from killing the enemy ace, exemplary. and then of course Please the A rank reward, reward uh, you get a mortar. It's uh, the anti tank series, the Elias series. Neither of the weapons are like too great. The uh, enemy scout rifle is just really high versus personnel, but it's uh, has in standard fashion as all the other enemy rifles it has really low range so 230 range you could try and give her like a high or give whoever you use this on a high range thing to try and make it like normal but it's it's a standard five shot 90 versus a person i guess if you want to run and gun run right up to someone and really blow them away you could but eh not the weapon for me really good damage uh but the Mortar for Grenadiers is just a, another Elias series. It's not anything too good. It's 1400 armor, uh, B rank 600 range, whereas the most upgraded Elias from just R&D is 1500 armor, B rank, uh, B aim rather, but with 550 range. So the only difference, like you, you lose 100 armor for gaining 50 range. That's the only difference. Nothing huge. All right, so the last of the elite skirmishes is Clash Between Elite Squads. Um, it's probably the second most difficult, uh, but still, I feel like the first one is by far harder. Um, it just also requires, like, you can't just run to the end because you have to right. capture everything. But we're going to place Rock down Minerva. Low. We're going to place down Crystal as just another scout, My as we've turn. been doing throughout the rest of this. Uh, plays down Raz, Riley, and Kai, and then two other shock troopers of your choice. I chose Viola and Ferrier. Now it's uh, kind of important. I, I mean, kind of, sort of. You can you can do other things, but um, the we main thing tough. is the no, we can do this. enemy ace sniper Slide rifle that we got from uh, Elite Skirmish Four is on Kai right now. That is pretty needed to get rid of a tank uh, on turn one. And then on Raz, I have an All ammo right. down machine me. gun. Uh, and you'll me. see why the that way. is the case here in a second. But we're gonna we're gonna start with the command with Raz, grab Kai, grab Ferrier. Well. Now, as a preface to this entire map, <laughs> this is not the most optimal way to do this. Found this is actually really, Found really it. messy. Uh, but I ran out of time to really like get a clean a clean run going um it gets the job done it's still a rank it's still got the uh the enemy ace um there's just some like crazy rng happening and it just gets really messy toward the end um and it, it's kind of messy all throughout like hindsight's 2020 so like this guy i should have attacked the first like immediately with riley instead of moving those three over there. Uh, this guy does duck the first attack, but it doesn't matter. The main thing I needed to do there was break the sandbags and then we'll use Riley again. Just fire, finish him off, and we're good to go to uh, capture this camp. This map, I really like this map design-wise, and it just seems like every map outside of, every time it's used outside of chapter 10, which isn't often, is just so much better. Like, it's a lot more fun. But we're using Kai, capping that flag, and uh, we're about to to just clear a lot of people back to back to back. Um, Kai needs to do one, and you could do a safety save before doing all this, just because, uh, again, dodging, like, we're running up shooting this guy in the face, Five. hoping he doesn't dodge. But there's defense down scouts like easy. all throughout this place. 
and so most angry. of the time they don't really make much a difference. Um, you could give Minerva the ailment resist during this to kind of help out with other things that happen, um, but we'll get there. So Ferrier, Just tell me if the cold's got gonna come up here, tired. and Ferrier is pretty up. much gonna be the MVP of this map. So she can come up and flamethrower this guy. Again, more things that you gotta worry about not dodging. I do make a safety save while I'm up here, but one at the start probably would have been better, so I didn't have to redo the whole Raz thing. Uh, but then there's this guy facing that way, so you get a, a free surprise attack. And then there's that Lance over there. I'm just trying to make sure I got my sights all nice and, and clean. We're going to use Ferrier again. Take out Mr. Surprise Attack over here, Flamethrower. No need to worry about him dodging there. Okay, and then, so there's the Lancer there, and there's another Lancer right here. So we're just gonna, we're gonna go behind him. Now Lancers take two shots with the Flamethrower, so either way you do this, it's gonna be two CP. Whether you shoot him, you grenade him, and then shoot him. I just, you know, we're behind him, get the surprise attack. He's a flamethrower, it does take him down to two HP. So like, they just barely survive, which is pretty annoying. And we're just playing merry-go-round. We've got him to, uh, to flip around, so might as well <laughs> run to his backside to get the surprise attack, make sure he doesn't dodge as I try to kill him. And after that guy, here is where I want to make this safety save. I get kind of close to this guy just because I don't know how our AP is going to be looking. Uh, I want to make sure I'm close enough to him to take him down. But there's a safety save because he does very much like to dodge. I think he dodged like four times in a row for me. So that was fun. <laughs> but we take him down. And uh, we're pretty much done. We, we do have to move Minerva, but Ferrier just crouched there and we want to look at the ladder right down there. Because there's the shock trooper that's going to come up on enemy phase. And uh, I want to take him down. So have her face that way. Oh yeah, we also need, you know, move Kai. This is the tank I was talking about. So that sniper rifle from Elite Skirmish 4 comes into play right here. It's just a long range anti-tank rifle. We get a nice clean shot at the radiator and we take it down from way over here. Both a heavy tank down and it held a command point for the enemy. So less stuff they can do, which is fantastic. And then this is where I kind of, I was mentioning the ailment resist on Minerva. So Minerva is going to be going around the tunnels because she is our, uh, our answer against the enemy ace. He's hidden in the way, way back on this side of the map. Uh, but there's this scout here with the defense down. I didn't get the defense up potential, which I normally do get. Um, but some stroke of luck happens. So I take out this Lancer. I was, it, it's not super necessary. Like Minerva should get to where she needs to be on turn three anyway, to take out the uh, enemy ace. But I got a double movement. So I decided, you know what? Might as well, uh, Make use of it, but I mean, not a whole lot of use because I <laughs> ran into that guy <laughs> with the defense down. I did not want to deal with him, so I just kind of hid over here, which ended up being pretty, pretty nice because the scout behind us doesn't shoot Minerva in the back of the head. He just kind of runs away. Um, but this is why I have the ammo down machine gun on Raz. This guy decides he wants to, he wants to fight Raz, take our camp back. And uh, I just took his mortars, so he can no longer do that. Um, you could do this. Th there's another spot that happened to me personally. If, if you do this in a more optimized fashion, it probably won't happen. I'll touch on that later. But you might want to bring another one on your... Like, where I put Viola, you might want to put uh, another ammo down machine gun over there. Ferrier or whoever you use in place of Ferrier. You you want a real gun. 
I'm using the the machine gun I got from I forget what elite squad mission, but the the really good machine gun that you get from this DLC. Uh, but yeah, here here's this guy. I thought he was gonna shoot me in the back of the head, but nope. He just goes right out the tunnel and uh, goes and says hi to his scout friend over here, making it real easy for me to kill him both at the same time next turn, which is fantastic. Can't really complain about that. But this guy really doesn't know what he wants to do. Um, so there's that. Also, the sniper, I, I was talking while the sniper shot at Raz from across the map. Ideally, you would want to position Raz in this camp to where that sniper doesn't have sights on him. So the rock right next to him, you would want to just finagle yourself in a way that you're using the rock as a perfect shield. But start of turn two, you can see the reinforcements are in the sky, ready to drop down on you. This is um, but I'm all going to ignore every defense. single one of them. Keep and we're protected. going to all units defend. And we're gonna start running down this left side. So we're gonna command with crystal. And we're gonna take Riley Watch my six. and my six. Viola up your and head out over here. Run up this slope and then get confused because <laughs> you thought that was the way through the slope, but nope, you go around. And then I just use Crystal's grenade, pop a grenade right in between them, nice and snug, Engaging. to take them down. Good. So they're out of the way. Don't have to worry about the defense down from them. Um, I was thinking about dropping Riley off right there, but eh, it wasn't really necessary. I mean, we have to walk backwards with her a little bit in a second, but it's fine. Uh, but after that, I'm gonna grab Kai. And this is kind of where things get a little messy. Um, so there's a tank at the camp over here. And it does look like not anymore. I would be able to shoot its Target radiator, confirmed. no problem. Enemy like, sighted. look at that, look at the angle. Like, that looks fine to me. But two minutes That's later of I just kind of roaming around trying to find a sweet spot, but I I'm cannot sorry, do it. Everyone. There's not a one shot there. showing up. And I decide, whatever, I'll just take the shot anyway. That's not what I should have done. I should have attacked the grenadier across the way on the left side, um, which I do, but not I do it too late for it to really matter a whole lot. <laughs> so instead of attacking that tank with Kai, uh, I, I should have taken out a Grenadier. Um, but we're gonna use Riley and take out that scout. And here is a screw up like number two, two and a half, three, however you wanna say which thing was a screw up and what's not, you know? <laughs> but, this shock trooper over here by the camp um, needs to die, but I also need the Lancer to not be crouching. So I decide, you know what, I'll just make sure, you know, fire in between, which doesn't so kill the trooper because I'm not targeting him. Now, if I did target the trooper, I actually don't know if it would blow up the Ragnite. So it's kind of eh. I needed to make sure the Ragnite got blown up so the Lancer would stand. And that was the main goal there. The um, but we'll make it. We're gonna grab Minerva, Commence run it down, attack. go down Follow this far tunnel. And uh, we luck out surprise. again. So <laughs> this is where like real improvisation came into play. So, normally I would run down here on turn three with a Minerva and take out this Macher, the Wily, or however you want to say his name. And that would be one of the last things I do. But because I lucked out with the, uh, with the double movement a second time, I decided, you know what? She will be very beneficial and very helpful for, uh, for turn three in Advance taking the camp carefully. because things about to get real messy so she's kind of sort of necessary but like not 
Really? Um... <laughs> so, we're gonna run Viola down there. This should be fun. And this is where I was saying having another anti-ammo gun might be beneficial, because we're gonna take both of these guys down just with a flamethrower. Um, we don't really need the bullets. But again, that grenadier that I was talking about that I should have taken out with Kai, that's what just hit me. Uh, so, you know, should have done that, but hindsight's 20 So flamethrower, we take out the trooper. Do a nice chunk to Weakling. the Lancer, and then I run around behind him, so I have the surprise stack set up. And this, I do use a, some fun. bullets on him, but it's not necessary. But if I, like I said, if I had Don't move. the uh, ammo down gun, what's about to happen on enemy phase would be much, much smoother. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna capture that. And we're gonna sit under this little awning, this grenadier cover fort thing. I don't actually know what they're called. Um, but here is where I figured out, oh, he's probably gonna like attack Crystal or something. If I don't take him out, I should have taken him out earlier, but here we are. But it, it, it wasn't really like instant. I did kind of look around to see if I could do something else, but it's like, eh, not really, no. So the Grenadier, we take him down. Um, and that's like, take that pretty much sets up the game. Uh, turn three is pretty, pretty simple outside of the mess that's about to happen. And then I still didn't learn my lesson. <laughs> I grabbed Kai again. And uh, I probably should have taken out that shock trooper I just looked at a second ago. But I was like, you know what? Let's just shoot this tank again. Because why not? I can't hit the, end, the, the radiator for whatever reason, even though it looks like I should have an angle on it. But whatever, more damage. Even though it doesn't matter, because Ferrier is going to get a demolition boost on the next turn and just wipe it clean anyway. So I'm just wasting command points. Um, and I probably could have very much used those command points. Especially if things went wrong here. But, you know, the enemy uh, paratroopers drop to the ground. And then this Lancer that's been just kind of chilling up on the, on the hill here... He, uh, he comes down here and wants to say some some words to Viola. Now, Viola isn't firing on him from that far away. Um, I think it's because she has an enemy gun. Um, but she lives. So it doesn't really matter. Crystal gets shot, unfortunate, but she's alive. That's all that really matters there. But he decides to move again, and this is where we shoot. He doesn't die. But if I had, you know, the ammo down, he couldn't kill Viola here. But another stroke of luck. I got a last stand here. And so I was able to counter and finish him off. So it was like, awesome. That was like the best. We, The luck on this map is crazy for how messy this is. Like I shouldn't be getting all of these lucky things. No. But whatever. It's saving my ass. He can't. Like, he's dead, he can't take the camp. So we're good, right? We're fine. We have the sniper attacking Raz again. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, that's that's the guy I was talking about. Annoying, but he doesn't kill, so whatever. And, you know, I thought I was safe, but here comes another Lancer. <laughs> uh, and Riley's trying her best to deter him. Uh, she hits him twice, but it doesn't matter. He is right there on the camp. And, uh, he takes the camp back. Which... isn't the most horrible thing ever, but... Uh, it makes the turn three way too close for comfort in terms of CP usage. 
We have this guy. I don't know what his deal was. He just kind of ran up here and didn't do anything else. Which, hey, whatever. No, no damage, no taking out Kai. Possibly making me lose another command point for this phase. Um, but I do an all units defend. This is an order. Because all we're going to be running defensive. straight Keep to protected. the camps. I don't actually know what the limit is for A rank on this map. Um, but I didn't want to go to turn four. So here I was looking to see if Demolition Boost would be better or Attack Weak Spot on Kai. Demolition Boost is cheaper. So we give that to Ferrier. This is an order. Blast those and then with everything you've got. it's the final turn and there is a lovely, lovely scout sitting right next to the tank down there that loves to dodge. So uh, we're gonna safety save. <laughs> so we make sure that we kill him without wasting a point. Again. There's, you know, the one of the paratroopers that dropped in doesn't have a defense down, but it's fine. We have the defense up from our order, and uh, also just the natural defense of shock troopers helping out. But there we go. We take him down. Thank you. And that camp is pretty much taken. We just run around to the radiator with Ferrier. Finish the job. And there we go. So now we just need to retake. Magnificent. We just need to retake the camp we lost. And then take the final one. And we're going. So this is where I use that improvised Minerva. Well, I think I. What do I do first? I think I, I use Minerva first. Yeah. For victory. So because she got all the way over here, there. I do officer. use her grenade here. to help out with the shock no here. Um, had Minerva not gotten here, this would all be up to Riley and Crystal. Um, and Riley only has one shot available, and we use it. Uh, we use it as like a sacrificial <laughs> attack, um, but it wasn't, it, like I said, the end of this gets really messy. We, we lost the camp. We're gonna save again, just in case, because I can't afford to, uh, to get the surprise attack on this Lancer over here. Can't afford to use that AP, so we're gonna run up, just shoot him in the face. He dodged quite a lot for me. So just reload until you get the hit. And Retake the camp. That <laughs> shouldn't have been taken in the first place. And uh, then we're gonna we're gonna run toward Minerva. So this is where like I've located I would run enemy. down here. And again, that that shock trooper in front of me. I could have taken him out with Kai, but again, wasting points on the tank. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna grab Riley. And we only have two points left after this, so like I said, we uh, we cut it kind of close, too close for comfort. Uh, especially because I'm about to attack Minerva with Riley. So the the positioning I I use with Minerva after take, or moving the shock trooper off the point was pretty terrible, but she dodges and survives, so. That's awesome. If she didn't, it still wouldn't have been a big deal. Um, I was thinking about using a heal order, but I decided, eh, she's on, she's on the camp alone. Might as well just go ahead and finish the job. Uh, I, if Minerva wasn't there, I would have had to use the last point, uh, trying to knock the last two points, trying to knock that shock trooper off the point with. Miner or with Crystal, and then if he doesn't, if he was still on it, killing him and taking it there would have cut it really close. But there's the enemy uh, mortar that we got, or from the enemy ace, got the A rank. 
Your and it's finally complete. Please accept this reward from headquarters. And our A rank reward is a Lenfield D9 rifle, which is a pretty nice rifle. Um, it's uh, it's just an upgraded version of the normal five shot Lenfield series. It has B plus in aim, uh, 420 range, so a nice boost to range. Uh, the damage does go down in comparison. Like, I'll show you the the normal Lenfield does more damage. But this one, it's only it's only two more damage per person, and then I think it was what four. Yeah, it, it's minus four versus armor. But as far as the five shot rifles go, it's not a bad one. The the B plus aim and the extra boost to range, I think, is pretty good. Uh, but not necessarily for me. I like the Brown series best. But here is the enemy ace um, mortar. It's really good in everything except for aim so it's i want to say one of the highest or if not the highest versus armor um <laughs> mortar it is it is only beaten out on versus person by one single uh mortar which is that vb gw6 and it has 600 range where the other enemy mortars don't have so I I don't know. It's it's a cool one. I like it. The E plus aim is pretty rough, but eh, eh. It's 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 really like how much do you value the aim? I equipped it because I decided to to mess with it. Um, but that is it. Post commentated, all skirmishes finally complete. Again, I, I apologize for how long it took to get this out, as it you know came out at the start of the month, and I've been putting it off, putting it off, and I finally got through all of it. It was rough. Uh, it was very demotivational for me, honestly. <laughs> but it's done, and I'm so happy. Um, so we can finish off the rest of the game. The the last DLC comes out on the 20th, which I'm excited for. That's the two Valkyria one. That's going to be a good one. Uh, and then we have the interlude and the true ending left to do. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, as far as this is concerned, I don't know if I would necessarily say the five bucks is worth it. I had fun. So, I mean, I guess maybe the five dollars is worth it. The weapons are really cool. Um, and you get, what, 12 weapons? So eh, they're pretty. Oh, there's some pretty good weapons in there. So I don't know. One was definitely the hardest, and the middle four are pretty much just free. But enough rambling. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see you all later.